Sonic the Hedgehog has really done it all when it comes to covering things on the internet. Sprite animations, freaky fan art, and of course, fan games. Chances are that if you click this video, you already know where I'm going with this, as when it comes to Sonic fan games, you really can't talk about the subject without bringing up the horror games. There are tons of Sonic horror games out there, mostly stemming from the infamous Sonic.exe, which you probably know what it is by now. If you don't know, it was a game made back in 2012, based on the story of an evil Sonic DVD that killed you if you played it, blah blah blah, over a decade later, and this bloody-dyed bum still has his presence in the fan game scene. While the story of Sonic.exe did help get the ball rolling for the Sonic horror scene, there are tons of different Sonic horror games out there that deviate from the EXE genre. And that's what I want to talk about here today. A while back, I covered a handful of different Sonic horror games, and I think it's about time I talked about more. I tried to get a decent variety because there are a lot of games that are just straight up Sonic.exe, but even doing that, there's still like two Sonic EXE remakes on here, so just bear with me. Some of these are good, some of these are bad, and some of these could just straight up kill you. We'll get to that in a minute though. So let's start off with none other than a reimagining of the original Sonic EXE game called Sonic 2011. This game was actually created by the co-owner of Sonic.exe, which I think it's hilarious that there was an unofficial rights acquisition of the character. It's just something I never thought I'd say in my entire life. So, I know I said I wanted to avoid EXE games a bit, but this one just caught my attention way too much. Sonic 2011 is a remake of the original Sonic.exe game. The project was directed by Joe Doughboy, who not only has done other Sonic horror games I've talked about, like Sonic PC Port, but he is the official co-owner of Sonic.exe. So long story short, the original creator of Sonic.exe was a piece of shit. so the ownership of the character was rightfully stripped away and given to three people, Astronomical Khan, Revy, and Joe Doughboy. They all do different things with the character, and I think that's pretty cool. People should continue to take this lame-ass story and character and transform it into something great. Anyway, Sonic 2011 was Joe's take on the character, in the form of a remake of the original game. Just wanted to quickly clarify that yes, while this is technically a remake of Sonic.exe, it is also the new official Sonic EXE game, so I do apologize if I refer to it as just a remake during this portion, I was not aware at the time. Anyways, back to the video. There's a complete sprite overhaul, segments have been changed or improved, it's basically just a better version of Sonic.exe, and despite it being a remake, I I thought it was really neat, so I'm gonna talk about it. Sue me. The game starts off just like the original Sonic EXE. It's all fun and games, and bam, pink eye strikes. The first segment is with our main man, Tails. You're thrown into the iconic hill zone with nothing but a big flat surface to run on. As you continue forward, there must be a gas leak or something because there's quite a few dead animals on the ground. God damn, that's gotta be some powerful gas. These animals went through it. Eventually, after walking for a while, you come across Sonic. Oh, thank God. Something good is finally happening. It's such a relief for Tails that he actually runs to the left automatically, and you have to hold right and force him to walk towards Sonic. That's your friend, silly. Go say hi. All right, that's my bad. Besides walking to the right and meeting up with Sonic, you can go to the left at the beginning for a secret area, and the game's not really a big fan of that. The secret area doesn't even really lead anywhere different, but it doesn't even matter because I died regardless, and then the game said no cheating? Because I died? Why would I cheat to die, asshole? Anyways, you're now stuck in a burning area called hide and seek. There's really nowhere to hide though, so it's really more like tag. Get your facts right, Sonic. Anyways, after a certain amount of time passes, your game stops and says time's up. A really subtle but cool change from the original game. In the original, you would just walk to the right until Sonic dances on your screen. It was nothing crazy. Sonic says, ready or not, here I come, and flies towards Tails. Run as fast as you can, not really much to do here as Sonic catches up, trips Tails, and snaps his neck. I've said it before and I'll say it again, you cannot be Tails in a Sonic horror game. You will die in a horrible way. Really, he should have just used code TOADBUP for 10% off at GamerSubs. That would have saved him for sure. Use code TOADBUP for 10% off at GamerSubs. With Tails dead, it's time for oh, some no. knuckles. You walk in this area with a small lightning flash every now and then, revealing your location. You can't run forever, however, as Sonic gets on your ass quick and eventually finds you. Oh, but don't worry, you actually have a chance to defend 
yourself here. If you attack these Sonic clones fast enough, you can actually knock them out and nah, I'm just messing with you. He kicks you in the jaw and then gives you a visit from the Tickle Monster. Knuckles doesn't seem to sound like he's enjoying it though. Like last time, there's a secret route if you go to the left, and similar to the original game, going to the left will, like, turn you blue for Why a second. On this route, the game applauds you for thinking outside the box. I play so many creepypasta and indie horror games, Sonic. Do you think I don't know to look for secrets? I got it tattooed on my forehead so I never forget. With Knuckles all knuckled, it's time for the doctor to take stage. He's my favorite character, so obviously he's going to be brutally murdered. You're in this weird dungeon area, similar to the original game, but unlike the original game, you have curtains now. Glad Sonic's giving us a little bit of privacy. Walk through the corridor for a little while and hop down some stairs, which leads to a scenery change. I also failed to mention that the music was redone in this game. It's kind of cool that pretty much all aspects of this game were remade. Anyways, Robotnik doesn't last long, as after hopping down another flight of stairs, the place goes dark and Sonic's just a little bit hungry, so he proceeds to kill Robotnik. With Robotnik dead, all three characters are no longer able to be played. The game cuts to static, and Sonic is now up and personal with the camera, with hyper-realistic blood. No way! He stares at you for a second, and instead of laughing and saying his iconic catchphrase of I am God, he writes his catchphrase on your screen in blood. That is kind of fucking sick. I love that. Anyways, he jump scares you, cracks the screen, and appears to be gone. Oh, come on, man. You just had to crack my Kevin heart staring wallpaper. And with that, the game is now over, and once again, if you've played the original Sonic.exe, you've seen this all before. However, this game was just so well polished and put together that it may as well just serve as a replacement for the original Sonic EXE. In my opinion, if you want the classic Sonic EXE experience with new and solid visuals and much better controls, play Sonic 2011. I have a feeling that this team isn't stopping here, so I'm excited for what Joe Doughboy and the other creators have to offer in the future. I don't have a crazy amount left to say, except why is Tails named Alan? Is that like one of the victims of Sonic EXE, or did Tails just want to go by something new? I mean, I'm not judging, I'm just curious. Let's transition away from Sonic.exe here for a little bit and talk about an entirely new plane of dimension with a 3D horror game called Childhood.Q. Why do they always add file extensions onto the end here? Ooh, I'm scared of Sonic.WebP or Sonic.MP3. That last one's real, by the way. Childhood.Q, outside of being one of my favorite file extensions, is a game made by Luba for the Luigi Kid Creepypasta Challenge. I mentioned it last on a Quarry video, but a lot of these games were made for this challenge. Anyways, this game's story is that it was a random PS1 ROM floating around on a forum, and you decided to download it. That's why it's called .Q, because that's like a PlayStation file. Booting up the game, the PlayStation intro plays, and it seems that you're playing on some sort of CRT. It gets like a C- for presentation during the intro, see me after class game. Turns out that this is a PlayStation version of Sonic 3, and after booting into the game, you're immediately met with a Robotnik fight. Right away, something's off here. I think it's the fact that this shit is smooth as hell. This 2D portion is both great and weird at the same time. I like how the sprites move, but I also don't like it. Eggman was never meant to be this smooth. They almost move like a sprite animation. Anyways, for this part, you gotta defeat Robotnik and his many forces. First is the Eggman in a ship. Don't touch the spikes and don't die because then it's back to the beginning. Then you gotta fight the really cool looking Mecha Sonic in this tunnel here. Small flashing lights warning is after killing the Metal Man, the world begins to glitch out a bit as you're now transported into this ice world. Last up on the chopping block is the Death Egg Robot. You have to avoid these giant pits of red glitches and just hit Robotnik enough times to defeat him. After this, you finally won! Just uh, look at that windscreen right there. Gorgeous. Made very obvious by the visuals, something just isn't right here, which is shown when the game freezes with a bunch of different error messages popping up until the game just eventually crashes. It also opens up this log in the fake PlayStation 1 emulator you're playing this on. Nothing crazy here, just the program being sentient and crying for help is all. Now the real game begins with a proper intro and all, even a headphone recommendation. Starting the game up again, you fall into this strange white void as a 2D Sonic, also coming across this weird glitched block. After this lucid encounter, the game swaps to 3D. 
I like the lighting and textures a lot here. Sure, it might be a little cheesy with the blood everywhere and the I crazy knuckle demons, here. but this Sonic model accompanied with the lighting makes everything fit into the environment really well. You gotta collect 50 rings while avoiding these scary knuckle demons around the map. Run into one and it'll chase you down until your blood meter drops to zero and the game ends. Roam around the map for a little while and you could pretty easily collect 50 rings. I actually collected way more than that while still having a pretty easy time. Once you have all of your rings, you can make your way to this glitching gateway and once you make your way through, you encounter, uh, Sonic? So, I left out a small detail here. At the beginning of the game, you're warned that this game will show your PC name to the next person that plays. And that's used in this segment where you encounter the other Sonic. My Sonic was named Vlad Dragomir. Guess a Romanian soccer player was playing some Sonic horror games recently. Anyways, the Sonic tells you that you need to leave now. Unfortunately, it's too late for you to run as the Sonic twists and contorts, you're left with nothing but the word run on your screen, and the game comes to a close. I think it implies that you're gonna join the Sonic at being trapped in this game, which is pretty cool, but I'm not sure that Romania is gonna be happy that one of their players is gone. This wasn't too bad of a game, mostly because it was something new in the Sonic horror scene, but it had a little more than that going on for it. A neat concept for a horror game with some good visuals makes this worth a play. It's not really scary or very long, but it is far from the worst I've played. Also, apparently there's some more to this game in the files, such as an entirely new game mode, but none of the downloads I had or could find had any of this in it. So, if you were upset that I skipped the scary tale scene, here you go, scary tales. This next game is a pretty recent one, and one that seems to have come out of nowhere. I'm talking about Green Mountain, a Sonic horror game that unironically is one of the only ones I've ever played to never have a single drop of blood present. Green Mountain is a Sonic horror game made by, well, we actually don't know. It was uploaded to Sonic Fan Games HQ by the user GreenMoun underscore Sonic. This person kinda just came out of nowhere, dropped this banger, and disappeared. Because of the situation surrounding it, this game is kind of an enigma, which is pretty cool. Anyways, on to the actual game. Opening it up gets you right into things, as you're now in this weird, saturated green hill area. You play as Sonic, except his eyes seem to be closed. There's no no UI, no enemies, nothing but Sonic moving through this level with some somber music playing in the background. The game plays well like Sonic, there's no complaints here. If you manage to die, most likely from fall damage, you'll just go back to the beginning. Eventually, you come across this giant mountain that you can platform up on. This process will take a minute though, so don't get impatient while climbing and try to make leaps of faith like I did. After the long and treacherous journey up the hill, you finally make it to the top. At the top of the mountain, there's this weird Sonic thing with a giant hole for a face just kind of sitting there. They're pretty chill though, so there's really no problem here. Okay, damn, they're not chill, they just start attacking you. It's a good thing they're weak as hell, because no matter what, you can't die here. Hit this imposter enough times, and they try to run away by pushing up against the screen. Oh no, not on my watch. You broke my trust, fake Sonic. I thought you were chill. After defeating this fake Sonic, nothing happens. The game just seems to stop here and keep you in this enclosed area. However, if you wait around long enough, you can slowly start to watch the world and Sonic begin to fall apart, literally. No! Sonic just kinda starts having pieces of him melt off. That can't feel good. The world gets darker and darker, the background starts to disappear, and Sonic loses the rest of his skin, leaving him looking like the same as the fake Sonic that you fought before. The world is fully engulfed in darkness as game over comes onto the screen, ending the experience once and for all. Okay, that's cool and all, but this is a Sonic horror game. Isn't Tails supposed to be brutally murdered? This game was really cool and a great breath of fresh air from the EXE saturation of the Sonic horror community. Not that there's anything wrong with EXE games, I mean, I've already talked about two, but it's just a little rare to find a Sonic horror game that deviates from that subgenre, you know? There's a little more to this game than what you just saw, though, as through hidden files in the game, an underlying story is revealed about two people. 
These two people apparently climbed Green Mountain to bury someone. Probably Sonic is deciphered from this cryptic image. Listen, I think people have already made this comparison, but I am getting crazy Mario vibes here. Mario as in the creepypasta game, not the character. I'd be pretty concerned if someone compared this to like Mario Golf or something. Anyways, for more of a deep read on this game, I'll link a Twitter thread from user Lemon Blues that does a pretty good job of uncovering the game. Anyways, great game, great presentation, great direction for the Sonic Horror Community, horrible Mario Golf sequel, moving on. Now that game was actually a pretty unique and fun Sonic Horror experience, so how about we go in the complete opposite direction for the next game here. Alright, two things before we cover this one. One, huge flashing lights and loud noises warning. I'm gonna slow down footage anyways, but still, this could be a rough watch, so skip to this timestamp if you need to. Two, I'm going to dig into this game hard, so just a reminder not to go and harass the creator of this game, or really anyone else I mention here for that matter. I'm criticizing the work here, not the person. I wish the best for this creator, and I hope that they go on to make more in the future and improve. With that said, oh my god, I knew I had to talk about this the second I played it. Sonic.xhog was created by Gorefield Slick Games. I guess I played a re-upload of it though, because the original upload was taken down a while ago. Anyways, this game knows how to bother me in every way possible. Listen, I've got my problem with EXE games, and I swear this game in particular knew my problems with the genre and proceeded to do almost everything that bothered me. I'll stop my yapping and talk about the game, and you'll just have to see what I mean. The game starts off with the Sonic 3 title screen. I believe there was originally a warning at the beginning, as there was one in Luigi Kid's video on the game, but during my game and other people's games on YouTube, there never was one. Apparently it was in this text file before the game, but would it have killed you to put it in the game itself? I'm not even past the title screen and my pet peeves are popping up. Anyway, Sonic proceeds to then pass away on the title screen as you're then thrown into launch base zone. You play as Tails, and I don't know how this game was made, but the controls are actually not that bad. Surprisingly, a lot of Sonic Horror games have issues when it comes to controls and physics. Anyways, exploring this zone as Tails, you gotta make your way to the right. I fell through these tubes and died a few times, but eventually I made it through alright. Eventually it starts to get a little like a pibby glitch in here, yikes! These glitches in the level continue, and it eventually culminates in a game freeze. You're shot into a new zone, and it's this weird desolate black and white void, although I do love a good bad apple reference when I see it. Anyways, with no sound, no obstacles, or really anything at all, you're left to explore more to the right of the map. Don't even think about dying, because if you do, the game decides to hit you with an epilepsy bomb and flash black and white at you for no reason. Great, awesome, lovely. After flying around for a while, I eventually fell through the floor of this area as the game faded to black. I dropped into Hydro City Zone, which I desperately want to call Hydrocity, and plummet into the water. Tails apparently can't swim, so you just hang around and wait for Tails to drown, even he's getting bored of it. As soon as the timer hits zero on his life, your game freezes and then proceeds to flash more lights at the screen. You are doing so many things wrong here. Not only are you substituting horror for what's supposed to be a jump scare, but your idea of a scary jump scare is killing every epileptic person in a 5 mile radius. Anyways, after that, your game crashes and you gotta boot it up again. You're still playing this? <sighs> yeah. It's Knuckles O'Clock, as you now get to play as Knuckles in Hidden Palace Zone. You travel across the level normally, and eventually you pass the Master Emerald area. It looks quite a bit different, though. You glitch out, the game freezes, and now you're back to the game. Except now there is an earth-shattering noise playing in the background, the colors are inverted, and the background is just one big flashing light. Do I have to explain why this is bad? I don't know if this game was satirical or a parody or whatever, it shouldn't have to be said, but don't put this in your game. I'll cover the flashing lights with this dancing cat video much better. Once you get past the boogie bomb of a level that was Hidden Palace Zone, you're back to the black and white purgatory you played as Tails in. You run into Sonic, then you run past Sonic, and then you run into Tails, and then run past Tails. I think you get the gist. Soon after this, you get attacked by this giant shadow hand, but after that little jump scare lingers for a bit, this image of a woman just sits on your screen. Now, the eyes are censored here, but because I don't trust that this isn't just a random image of someone the creator found, I decided to censor the whole face to be huh? safe. The game closes once more, and you now play as Sonic in Ice Cap Zone. 
the platforming here is kind of annoying because on top of it being slippery, every time you die, you get, you guessed it, bright blue flashing lights. Wonderful. So wonderful, in fact, that I kind of just gave up for the day and stopped playing. I was originally going to go back and get the footage of the ending, but I googled the ending just out of curiosity, and now I'm glad that I didn't. After breaking through this barrier and doing some more platforming, you reach the end of the level where this glitching Robotnik is hanging out. Sonic looks towards the camera, jumps down, jump scares you, and then the game shuts down your PC. A great end to an incredible game. So, I mean, this game has some redeeming qualities. The game controls pretty well. There's some actual gameplay involved at times. Uh, the picture of the woman was unsettling, but then again, it might have just been a random picture of a person. So, I mean, yeah, that's unsettling. Unfortunately, that's where my praises end because this game just does everything I hate in creepypasta and EXE games. Crazy flashing lights, scares unrelated to the game, loud and annoying noises for the sake of being loud and annoying, jump scares, and my biggest pet peeve of all, a fourth wall break at the end that also shuts down your PC, by the way. Now, not that there's anything wrong with breaking the fourth wall in your game, but this is a pretty big issue that a lot of EXE games suffer from nowadays, unnecessary meta horror. We've entered this era where fourth wall breaks have become pretty commonplace in creepypasta games. When integrated into the game and story properly, they can work very well as scares or gameplay gimmicks. I'm not saying they have to have a clear and definite story purpose in the game, but I just personally think that they work better when they have a reason to be there, you know? When a game completely relies on these random fourth wall breaks to carry a game, it just doesn't work the same. And at the same time, these games seem to keep upping the severity of the fourth wall breaks. Sure, shutting down your PC isn't anything horrible, but this escalation is only gonna get worse. There was an EXE game recently called Vanilla.exe that would just straight up blue screen your PC. Once again, it did bother me that the blue screen didn't really have a reason to be there, but my real issue with it was that it's helping in setting a dangerous precedent for the future. At a certain point, how far is too far for these games? Anyway, sorry about the huge rant on a silly Sonic horror game. Uh, I give this game 9 out of 10, best Mario Golf oh. game I've ever played. We're down to the last game here, and it's called Sonic.exe One More Time. Or, I think it's actually called One Last Round? No, 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 wait, wait. One Last Round Rework. No, it was One Last... You know what? I don't know what the hell it's called. Future Bup, help me out here. Sonic.exe One More Round is a reimagining of the two original EXE games, Sonic EXE and Sally EXE. This was made by Mr. Pixel Productions, who has done quite a bit of work for the creepypasta community. He not only worked on this game and its other games, but the Mario Horror game Too Late.exe, which is a pretty popular one in the Mario Horror community. Anyways, like I had joked about earlier, this is a game with a lot of entries in its series. The original game was called Sonic EXE One More Time. This one was subtitled One More Round, and the sequel was called One Last Round. This is actually the reason I didn't cover this game back in my first Sonic Horror video. I accidentally played one half of One More Time, and then another half of One More Round. I was too confused and called it quits, but here I am a changed man, and now, with the ability to read, let's play Sonic EXE One More Round. The game starts off with the classic Sonic finger wag, and oh, there's no fake out this time, we're just getting right into it, huh? I respect it. Just like the original game, you've got the core three to choose from, starting with Tails. I will immediately say that this game looks and plays great, probably due to the engine it was made in. This is how you do a Sonic EXE game, make it play like, well, yeah. Sonic. After walking to the right for a bit, the game cuts to black as Sonic says hello. This game has an ongoing theme that Sonic has been through all of this before, and he wants to both acknowledge the cycle of the EXE hell, and spice it up a bit. The level is all scary and orange now, but run into Sonic again, he thinks, nah, not good enough. You're now in a dark and bloody version of the stage. It's a lot less subtle, but I mean, still well made nonetheless. Sonic claims that things never change, and that means it's time for some hide and seek. And when Sonic says things never change, he means things never change, and that goes for the fate of Tails too. He gets caught by Sonic and ripped clean in half. Oh, thank god. I thought Tails was gonna escape unharmed for a second. Each character death ends with a little pixel art too, a really neat touch. I haven't really mentioned it yet, but this game is pretty cool visually. I could see how this type of sprite art isn't everybody's cup of tea, but I like it. Anyways, it's Knuckles O'Clock 1. 
once again. Make it through Scrap Brain Zone, but scary, the level slowly gets darker, and you guessed it, Sonic.exe makes his appearance. I like this little eyeball transition here when he says he found you. Knuckles tries to fight Sonic EXE once again, and just like every other time he tries this, it ends in him getting killed. Every death seems to be pretty unique here too, it's a nice deviation from the original game. Sonic's like, damn you suck at this game, and now it's time for my guy Robotnik again. I don't know why I act like I don't know what's about to happen. You're in the dark corridor from the original Sonic EXE, however, it's amped up to 11 here. As you descend, there's hands reaching out of the floor, tons of blood on the ground, Sonic ghosts on every side of Eggman, it's just not looking good for my goat. Inevitably, Robotnik is attacked and impaled, leaving him dead dead and you out of characters. Sonic then asks if you're ready for round 2 as the game over screen plays. It's actually a recreation of the original Sonic EXE game over screen, down to the image that shows up when you press escape. That's really cool. Don't press it too much though, because then Sonic gets startled and closes your game. Oh, don't worry, there are alternate routes you could take in this game, it's just that they all kill you anyways. I didn't find the alternate route for Tails, but I was able to find one for Knuckles. With Knuckles, you can enter this trippy spiral area, and eventually after exploring for a while, you get put in a chokehold by Sonic. He doesn't seem to understand how choking works though, and proceeds to rip out your heart. He then follows it up with some great advice, thanks Sonic. Robotnik's alternate route involves going to the left, hopping in his little drill cart, and trying to escape. Sonic makes it pretty clear though that any attempts to escape are just not gonna work. You explore this new zone, everything gets all red and scary as you explore, and of course, Sonic gets you. I do think it's funny though how he just straight up says, now take your secret endings. Anyways, enough of Sonic, it's time to move on to the second portion of the game, Sally.exe. You don't see Sally.exe acknowledged much nowadays, so this was pretty cool. Uh, this is for obvious reasons, but still. Booting the game up again after the Sonic.exe segment is over, you're greeted with a clip from the Sad AM cartoon, similar to the original Sally EXE game. And like the original Sally EXE game, it's followed up with a fake blue screen. The title screen plays, but Sonic seems to have slept in, and first up to play is Amy Rose. As Amy, you can run through the not perfect zone, and as you may have already guessed, running to the right eventually turns everything scary. You watch Sonic hop into this ring and follow him in. You now have to beat this special stage, oh oh, my bad. You now have to beat this evil special stage to escape. Let me tell you, I was locked in for this, but even though I was locked in, I did still manage to lose the first time, which just ends in quick cuts of Sonic attacking Amy. Actually managing to escape by getting into this ring, you just delay the inevitable, as you're transported into a random zone, and Amy almost immediately gets caught and killed. Next up is Cream. She looks kind of upset for some reason. Surely there's no reason for this. In the wonderfully named Kind and Fair, you can run to the right and grab these speed boxes to absolutely zoom through the stage. Eventually, Cream stops right before these spikes though. It was a real close call. It's a shame Sonic steps in anyways to throw her into the spikes. Kind and Fair? Erm, um, I don't think so. You could also go to the left to find this weird forest area. Eventually, after walking through for a while, you run across a cabin with Cream mother vanilla inside. She doesn't last long though as you then find her dead. You also don't last long as Cream is then also killed. Sonic calls you out on this and to be fair I am getting these people killed multiple times just to see a different ending so you know what? Valid point. Last up on the chopping block is Sally Acorns and despite Sonic EXE telling you that this is your last chance you're f***ed from here on out. You get stuck in this box after running around for a bit, you get slowly but surely crushed to death while this giant Sonic watches and the game cuts to static. This is where the game deviates a bit from the original games as it now cuts to Sonic EXE talking directly to the player. He's interested in how you played, but still reminds you that no matter what, they're gonna die anyways. Why is this exactly? Well, surely it's not because Sonic EXE wants to impersonate a deity. God damn it, Sonic. Sonic shakes your screen and fills it with text boxes exclaiming that he is indeed God. After the game makes you close each individual text box, the game crashes and is now finally over. And with that, we have gotten through all of the Sonic horror games I wanted to discuss. There was definitely more that I wanted to cover, but I just had too much to say about the ones I picked. 
Games like Executable Entertainment, Sonic 1 Prototype, Sonic Dimensions. I've got enough here for another video if I really wanted to, so let me know if that's something you want to see. Now, despite how much negative stuff I had to say about certain games here, playing through these made me realize once again just how talented the Sonic horror space can be. I mean, something as simple as the idea of a Sonic EXE remake has been taken in so many different directions by so many different people in so many creative ways. Hell, you don't even have to make your presence known to make a good Sonic horror game. Green Mountain is unironically one of the best Sonic horror games I've ever played. I think I've said enough in this video about how I feel about Sonic horror games, but how about other people in the community? How do they feel about them? The Tailstock curse became very popular in the midst of the early creepypasta era on the internet, and in my opinion is a very strong staple in the Sonic horror community to this day. Sonic video games were, at the time, the wet dream of your average Sonic horror fan, combining the demonic edginess of Sonic Sonic AXC with the supernatural entity of Chaos Doll. Honestly, this is, this is just Sonic EXE, Spirits of Hell Round 2. I just remember watching a lot of videos on this and then playing it myself. It's, it's just a really cool game. You know, I don't play many Sonic horror games, but there is one that I will defend to my dying breath, and that's SUNKY.MPEG, BABY! <laughs> the tails is going to the right. <laughs> the tails is going to the right. So, the main thing we're going to be talking about is Sonic.EYX, which... I personally think is one of the coolest versions or interpretations of Sonic.exe. Sonic Heroes. That's it. Childgarden.exe is a game I'm very indifferent about. As much as the concept is cool, I find the story and gameplay a bit lacking. Sonic Nightmare Beginning. If being Sonic.exe is voice acting for two years has taught me anything, it's that he's really silly. Huh? Like, you honestly can't tell me that an evil Sonic the Hedgehog with blue red eyes spewing the edgiest stuff imaginable isn't at least a little hilarious. This community is a crazy passionate and tightly knit one, and I can't wait to see more games in the future and how the community reacts to them. Let's ease up on the fourth wall breaking though. This next game is gonna crush me with a cartoon boulder, I swear. I think I played one too many EXE games. I, I don't feel good at all. Does anybody have some ibuprofen? Ruh, 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 ruh.